All right, welcome back to our lecture series. This one here is on Echinodermata, so the starfishes, sea cucumbers, and sea urchins. So looking at um, the phylogenetic tree again, phylogenetic tree of, of the animal life, uh, we're up here next to the sisters of the chordate, so we're more highly evolved than the arthropods, round, round worms, and nilids, etc. Uh, and so these are the first of the deuterosomes. So we talked about deuterosomes way back when we first introduced uh, the animal kingdom. And uh, so we have two major functions or pathways of our blastula. So in the uh, embryonic process, so sperm and egg make zygote, zygote makes uh, the embryo, the gastrulization process, marula, blastula, gastrula. So in that gastrula process, we have two op we have two possible ways. We have the first opening, if it opens, could be a protosome. If that first opening becomes a mouth, if the first open opening becomes the anus, then that is characterized as deuterosome. So in this early, early, early pathway of life, in the gastrula stage, the second opening here is going to become the mouth. And that characterizes all chordates and echinoderms. Um, so looking specifically in the echinoderms, what synapomorphy do starfishes have and other echinoderms have that makes them separates them from chordates? Um, well, obviously, as an adult, they have radial uh, symmetry. This uh, We'll talk about that. They have a spiny skin. Their, their skin is actually internal, or I should say their skeleton is internal and they have this very unique and awesome water vascular system which we'll talk about in study today so uh, the general characteristics here so again if you're following along on the hot sheets there these guys are exclusively marine so no fresh water no terrestrial uh, no terrestrial so no land dwelling unsegmented bodies uh, the adults is pent amorous secondary radial symmetry so what type of symmetry do they have uh, as larvae because again, uh, outside of sponges and jellyfish, the cnidarians, everything is bilateral. And uh, echinoderms do not nullify that uh, tidbit, that, that trait, uh, because as larvae, they do represent bilateral symmetry. Now they change into adults and exhibit that radial pente pente amorous uh, radial symmetry there. And again, they have a very unique water vascular system um, there. So this is the first phylum that we talked about that has an internal skeleton. Um, no, no surprise there. The, the organ or the element that we're most, uh, most common with our skeletal st structures is calcium. So just kind of like in our systems there, their digestive system is complete. Uh, the respiration is by these two feet. Uh, no kidney. They are dioecious. So remember, dioecious means uh, separate sexes. So we do have real male starfishes and uh, female starfishes. So separate organisms have separate uh, gonads there. And again, their locomotion there is by that water vascular system. So um, this pentaradial symmetry there. So again, here's our starfish. This little guy represents something called the madre porite, uh, which we'll discuss in just a little bit when we get to the anatomy. Uh, but the larvae, which again, it's hard to believe that this is a uh, echinoderm larvae, and there's multiple uh, representations of this. We can, if I go straight to a laser pointer, if we divide this directly in half here, what's it's equal on the left and right portions, right? But as adults, we can cut this in multiple planes, and essentially the starfish will have the same on there. So again, as adults, they are radial. As larvae, they are bilateral. So again, just more representations of different type of larvae depending on family and uh, classes of echinoderms. So some more characteristics here. Again, follow, follow along on the hot sheet there. So again, we are dioecious. Fertilization is external. I'll show you a quick video at the end, toward the end of this presentation. Uh, that shows how fertilization is internal by the spawning um, aspect of it. This water vascular system, again, we, this network of canals, you'll want to know all of the canals and the pathway that water follows through that. So there are seven structures in there that we'll get to. Um, at the very end there, these canals are 
connected to extensions called tube feet. So if you were to flip a starfish over on the uh, ampullarical ampu groove, there there's going to be these tube feet shown here um, that help these help these starfishes and the other kind of nerves hold on and move as well. Uh, it's very important for locomotion, for feeding. So these little tube feet can kind of like little suckers can help pry open um, other types of like bivalves and things like that. And as well as for gas exchange. Um, so on the arboreal surface, so on the top surface there, we have this madre pori or this sieve plate. Um, if you look at the top of a starfish there, it looks like this has almost like a little Marilyn Monroe beauty mark uh, on the surface there. That's actually the madre pori, and that's where the water begins to go through the starfish. Uh, immediately following that, it goes through what's called a stone canal, and the stone canal gets its name because it has uh, characteristics and elements of limestone. Uh, so as the name gets there, and then this immediately goes into the ring canal. Um, and so on this one here, look at this diagram here. So we have the Maji Porite, again, the little beauty mark on the external. Um, the stone canal, and then we have a ring canal. And as you can see, because it is a ring structure, the name there, for once, biologists didn't overcomplicate things, is a ring. And extending outwards through each arm, we have something called a radial canal. So going through it again, madriporite to stone canal. So the madriporite is basically like the, the start of the funnel, if you will. Uh, then the actual tip of the funnel will be the stone canal into what's known as a ring canal. Going to each arm is a vascular structure called the uh, radial canal. And then we have lateral canals attached to these little... Um, these old school bike looking uh, horns. They go, if you remember that, right? So the radial canal follows the lateral canal because we're going out to the sides, lateral. And the actual bulb of this structure is called the ampullae, right? This ampullae can squeeze and contract water just like you would squeeze those old bike horns to make the sound. And as I squeeze, the water is going to be contracted into the final tube feet down here below, right? So here's the ampullae, right? And we're going to squeeze or contract this, and the sucker or the tube feet, the podium there, as this, this diagram here shows it, um, is what's going to allow these um, echinoderms to move around to feed to, uh, and as also for gas exchange as well, as we said. So how do these things operate? Check out this quick video here. It is just absolutely incredible. Um, showing just how remarkable starfishes generally are. Let me dismiss this reminder here. Okay. Under the surface, echinoderms are equally unusual. The sea star skeleton is nothing like our own. Just beneath the skin lies a latticework made up of thousands of bony platelets. They're woven together by minuscule muscles which can flex the arms in any direction. They have incredible strength and endurance. A special protein allows them to lock their arms in position effortlessly for hours, something our muscles could never do. Instead of a brain, echinoderms have a nerve ring, a living relay station. It acts to coordinate the movements of their arms. How do creatures built on such a simple design, so different from our own complex bodies, manage to survive and even thrive? To the two feet moving. Echinoderms move and feed like no other animals on Earth. They use remarkable organs, completely unique in the animal kingdom. Hydraulically powered tube feet. The 
tube feet of sea stars are inflated by water, drawn into the body through a single opening called a sieve plate. Madre Pora. The water fills the five radial canals which run down the length of the arms, forming a hydraulic system. The water is stored in little muscular bulbs. When a bulb contracts, it forces water into the elastic tube foot, extending it. Muscles on the foot swing it in the direction the sea star wants to move. Sea stars can move equally well in any direction, but they must coordinate the movement of thousands of feet. Used together, they have incredible strength. Sensory tube feet sweep over the tightly packed mass of shells, searching for any gap in the muscle's defenses. Settling on its victim, the sea star hunkers down and begins its attack. The first wave of the assault begins with the two feet, which use hydraulic pressure to pry open any gaps in the muscle's shell. Next, the sea star deploys its most unusual weapon, its stomach, which moves out of its body to digest its prey alive. Pretty neat little animals there for sure. Um, so again, the whole purpose of that was for you to show how water goes through the water vascular system. Uh, so again, it goes through the Madre Pori, again meaning mother pore por or mother of pores. Uh, that beauty mark on the external goes to the stone canal. The stone canal then goes to the ring canal. The ring canal then sends water radially out to all of its arms. So that's the radial canal. Uh, which you show here. The radial canal is then connected to a lateral canal, because there's one on each side, that goes to impulae, and then to the two feet here. What's interesting and I like about this diagram here is that there is a valve, just like there's valves in our, uh, our car, uh, circulatory system, there's no return valve. So as water gets pushed, on the only, only water can only travel one direction, so when it gets pushed there, and then as soon as there's back pressure, this closes back. And again, it's the only way uh, that I want to, when I'm ready to, for water to go in there, is when there is less water in here. So again, it still follows the principle of diffusion and osmosis, high concentration to low concentration. So when I contract this and water is expelled outward, now I have a low concentration of water in here and I have a back pressure here. That back pressure allows the water to go in here. When this fills up, this will then close tight. Allowing water, allowing, uh, not, I should say, not allowing water to return back into the radial canal. So again, it's only going flowing one way. So again, just the water vascular system there. Know those seven structures. We've gone through that a few times there. Uh, so the Madreporite, Stone Canal, Radial Canal there. Um, this Tidman's body, that's mainly uh, for um, usually like some, not endocrine, but. Um, white blood cells type thing, so it's, it's more immune function than anything uh, from the best I've read there. From the ring canal to radial canal, lateral canal, and pulae, and two feet. So, uh, external, external anatomy here to know. Uh, so the central disc, right, where everything, uh, kind of there, that nerve net that we saw internally there a while ago. The arms, the anus is at the top, which is kind of weird if you think about it, but again, knowing that the mouth is on the bottom, that makes more sense because it is a complete um, digestive tract. On the, on the ventral side, you see the ambulacral grooves, right? And then with the two feet right beside the uh, there, they got the spines, sensory tentacles there, and the mouth. Internally is a little weird, uh, but neat at the same time. So again, we've got pyloric uh, cecum and ducts there, so that's just going to help aid in digestion. We have two different stomachs. We have a pyloric stomach, which is the most dorsal, and a cardiac stomach, which you saw from the video there, 
that's going to come out of the mouth and start to digest uh, animals externally, which is just kind of weird. As we've seen uh, fungi do those types of things where they send out exoenzymes that are going to digest foods externally. Uh, but as far as animals go, we really haven't seen an animal with this type of adaptation that's going to digest their and, and eat their um, their prey externally. Um, every arm has their gonads. So again, with, from this arm here, the pyloric duct is removed, pyloric cecum is removed. So you can see the gonad. So this would be either ovaries and eggs or testes and sperm, again, because they are dioecious. Um, looking through here, I think that's all that there really are for this. Don't really worry about the transverse uh, view there. So, um, so again, this is a good diagram. So kind of stop the video here. See if you can name as many of these structures as you can. So again, hope you were able to stop there. Hope you were able to get most of these structures. So again, kind of going through here, we've got the pyloric stomach. We've got the cardiac stomach, two separate stomachs. So mouth, cardiac, pyloric, just like in the crayfish, right? Mouth, esophagus, cardiac, uh, pyloric. Um, going from there, we've got the water vascular system. We've got the module porite, stone canal, ring canal, radial canal, lateral canal, and pupillae in two feet. You can say that enough, you can just rattle that off just like that. It's really, it you know, kind of will become second nature there. Coming off the pyloric stomach, you're going to have the pyloric ducts and the pyloric cecum, and then as well as you're going to have gonads. So, perfect, perfect. So again, you saw in the video how they eat, they use their feet, they use their cardiac stomach and mouth, the enzymes that are going to help digest food, what is brought internally there, the pyloric stomach and the pyloric cecum are going to create these enzymes that are going to help it to digest its food. In the reproduction, remember each arm uh, produces either sperm or egg depending on male or female, and fertilization is going to occur externally. So essentially they, so these go through a spawning um, reproductive cycle so that you're familiar with, maybe you're familiar with fish, uh, so essentially environmental cues, they're going to con congregate together, female are going to release their eggs externally, male are going to release their sperm uh, externally, and um, then they're going to develop, uh, fertilized eggs are going to develop zygotes and into this bipinary, this larvae that we looked at, remember that's bilateral symmetry there. Um, so once it settles to the bottom, it goes through the metamorphosis process there and turns into individual starfishes. Um, so you may know that starfishes can reproduce asexually by regeneration. So if a starfish loses parts of its arm, it can regenerate. Uh, and more incredibly is if part of the arm and central disc is uh, removed, then that can become a completely identical clone of the original starfish. Um, and so, again, it, it's a really, really unique aspect. But, again, the, there are some, um, as we've talked about multiple times now, different uh, strategies and pros and cons with asexual and sexual reproduction. So just to show you a real quick clip of, because I had the questions too, of like, okay, well, I didn't really see any, genital pores, so how do starfish release their eggs and their sperm? Check this video out. Some starfishes reproduce by releasing their eggs directly into seawater. About the time the eggs are released by female sea stars, males release their sperm. That's spawning. A large male starfish like this one will fill the water with billions of sperm cells. Wild. <laughs> So again, that's that spawning there that increases the likelihood of sperm and egg finding one another there. So to summarize and to finish up here, so uh, hopefully this video you've been able to find the general characteristics of echinoderms that you've learned and will have learned the internal and external anatomy, definitely the pathway of water vascular system, and how starfish eat and reproduce. So again, if you're following along in your hot sheets there, um, we got bilateral symmetry as larvae, as adults, pentanamorous, secondary radial. Uh, their first one with the internal skeleton, they are complete, so they have separate mouths and anus. Uh, dioecious, so they're separate sexes there. 
fertilization is external by that video there. The water vascular system, obviously, major pores, stone canal, ring canal, radio canal, lateral canal, and purely into the feet. So again, if you watch this a few times, go through that water vascular system, you'll be able to rattle that off um, very well. So again, know the structures, external and internal of the starfish there. And the water vascular system again. So again, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions, again, feel free to contact me and look forward to um, talking to you soon.